Wasabi, you guys. Welcome to Integration B Training for Advance. This is part 9.3, and we're so we're still dealing with infinite functions. So in this section, pretty much we're dealing with a lot trickier infinite function integrals. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So we have this integral here. We have x to the power of x to the power of x all the way, and then we just randomly have x to the power of 1 over x here. So how do we deal with this integral here? So just out of curiosity, what is this infinite function, right? So let's go ahead and try this. And let's see, we, I mean, it's the inside is equal to its outside. So we have this. All right, let's try to isolate uh, x. Uh, and then if we just do kind of like the omega root of itself, wait a minute. What does this look like? It looks like exactly like this. So what this means is that this is the inverse of this, right? Now, now, however, be careful. If we're going to use the sum of inverses, what, what is necessary? The bounds, right? The bounds are very necessary. So if we plug in 1, so if we plug in 1, let x equal to 1, does it equal to 1? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. What about zero? If we plug in zero, does it equal to zero? All right, that's very, that's tricky. That's the hardest part. Let's go ahead and see where where that would take us. Uh, if we approach to zero, one over w here. So here, because I'm only doing this side instead of taking the limit here because it's easier. So if this, if I plug zero in here and this equals to zero, then that's good. That means that they are, this satisfies the sum of inverses. So let's go ahead and find the limit here. We can use a loophole log, form the loophole log, and we end up with this. Now, if we plug in zero, let's see. Plug in zero here, that's zero, plug in zero here, that's infinity, or negative infinity. Huh. That is a little, huh. So we have, we have some trouble here. Um, we have negative infinity, and then we have, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. So pretty much I guess another another way of viewing this it's this very it's a little confusing to see but let me show you how to kind of reword this so um, 1 over w we have ln of w here or, or omega uh, but anyways if I plug in 0 if we just plug in 0 Okay, this is infinity, and this is negative infinity. So we have e to the negative infinity. And so technically, this limit converges, and this limit is equal to zero, right? And that satisfies this, the bounds. All right, cool. So that means that we can use the, uh, the sum of inverses. So, right, we plug in one, this equals to one, we plug in zero. Well, we plug in zero here. And this satisfies zero here. So because our limit is equal to zero, right? Plug in zero, we end up with zero. So, and that's, of course, we have zero here. So that's very nice. So that means that by sum of inverses, this integral is equal to one, okay? I think this part is the hardest part to see because it looks uncomfortably wrong, but this is technically um, I mean, if there's gonna, oh, okay, there's, there might be some, a little bit of controversy here, but, um, I, I guess another way of viewing this, you could do like a limit substitution. So we'll have like one over u. So when we do a limit u substitution, like, I'm sorry, a limit substitution, it's not really a u substitution. This is an integration. Uh, but with this limit, let's see. Now, if we try it now, does it 
is it a bit comfortable? Let's see, negative u, ln of u, right? So now, now it's a lot more comfor comfortable to see. Oh, this is this is this whole thing is infinity, right? Okay, and then this is a negative. So e to the negative infinity. This is equal to zero. So you you could do it like this instead. Okay. All right. Let's go and move on to the next integral. We have this integral from UC Berkeley integration b. What do we do now? Well, there's so many e to the x's so let's let let's go ahead and let u equal well let's let u equal to negative x uh, e to the negative x let u equal e to the negative x okay so what this would give us let's see du is equal to negative e to the negative x dx okay so we do have that e to the negative x this extra stuff here if we will use that negative to switch the balance because so, we do end up with 0 to 1 and now we go ahead and plug it in all right let's see we have e to the negative x so if we we have e to the negative x times e to the negative x times e to the negative x times e to the negative oh we, you know we, we this goes on forever right okay so then this is u to the power of u, which is being powered. To, oh, okay, so this is u to the power of u to the power of u, and then it goes on forever. Okay, but what about here? Okay, so we have e to the negative x being multiplied by e to the x. This is the same thing as u to the power of 1 over u. Wait a minute, what is this? This is the exact same integral that we just solved uh, before in the previous integral, right? Yes, it is. So that means that this integral here is also equal to 1. Okay? Awesome. So whenever, if you're dealing with a, an infinite function and you can't solve for omega, right? For some reason, you can't solve for omega. Instead, try to use the inverse function right so let's say okay like we end up with this but we don't know how to simplify or isolate omega well then in, instead consider using the inverse function right consider using the inverse function in this case the inverse of this infinite function here is this okay so we have two different infinite functions. This is probably the coolest integral me and my friend has ever made uh, for UC Berkeley. So this is very, again, be very careful. This this does, I mean, people can solve this integral, but there's, there's a shorter way. There is a so much shorter way of solving this. Now, let me show you. This here, so what is, what, what is this infinite function? So let's go ahead and solve for that. Let me put this in yellow. Okay, we have x, x plus, and then the inside is equal to its outside. And so now we have w x plus w square equal x. And now we have w square uh, plus w x minus x equals to zero. Well, let me actually factor let me, let me just factor this. We, you, you'll probably use quadratic formula, but let me just show you something real quick, okay? Just, just trust me on this. Just trust me on this. Okay, so we have, this is one minus uh, omega equal x. So isolating x, we have w or omega squared minus, I'm sorry, Omega squared over one minus omega. I think I think to some of you math Olympians, you already you already know where this is going, right? This here, what is this? That's a geometric series. This is x squared over one minus x, right? What is this? Yes, yes. This both of these are inverse of each other. Both of these infinite functions are inverses of each other. So, 
what we have is technically the y equals x squared over 1 minus x. Now, the reason why I write it like this is to check if we can use the inverse, the sum of inverses, right? If I plug in 1 half, does it come out as 1 half, right? Well, we know that plugging in 0 comes out 0, yes, but what about 1 half? If we plug in 1 half, we get 1 fourth over 1 minus a half, and then we have, oh, would you look at that? We have 1 over here. Oh, this does equal to 1 half. Yep, that satisfies. So that means that this integral here, oops, let me put that in white. So this integral, this whole integral here, this is equal to 1 fourth. So the answer of this integral is 1 fourth. Okay, I know it's crazy, but yes, these two of these infinite functions are inverses of each other. A lot of people, they would just solve here and then use the quadratic formula and then they get disgusted like how nasty it is to solve this integral. Okay, I don't blame them. It is very hard to see. But here with the sum of inverses, it's we can just immediately solve this as this is equal to one fourth. Okay. All right, this is our last integral. This integral is from Harvard MIT Math Tournament Integration B. And this is very, very sneaky. It's very, um, you, you, there's, there's a lot of traps into this integral. You have to be very, very careful. So here, let's go ahead and find the inverse because, I mean, you can, you, you can clearly see that when you try solving for, I'm just going to call it W just because uh, for tongue sakes, we have w cubed minus w equal to x, okay? But here, that's nasty. Like, we, we don't want to solve for, like, you know, solve for w or, like, using the cubic equation. However, however, we can use the inverse function, right? So, wait, but how do we do that? Do you remember inverse jailbreaking, right? Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. So we have this as our function, our original function. And we're going to integrate, instead, we're going to integrate the inverse, in this case, uh, w cubed minus w, right? Now, the most difficult part, what's our bound, right? What is our bound? If we plug in 0, so that means this is 0, right? Or I'm sorry, let's start with 6, right? Start with 6 here. Oh, okay, that's like, this means that this is equal to 2. All right, cool, right? Because 2 cubed minus 2 is equal to 6, just by inspecting, you know, testing, plugging in numbers. Okay, so plugging 6 here gives us 2. But what about here? Plugging 0, if we let x go to 0, right? Um, there's an issue. W can equal to 1, negative 1, or 0. Which, which one do we choose? Which one do we choose? Okay. So, this is where the nastiness comes in. So, unfortunately, we have nothing else but to investigate this. Now, again... I mean, let's be honest, as, as, as someone like me, who, who's not very comfortable in graphing, I don't know what the graph of this looks like. But what I do know is the graph of its inverse. So let's graph the inverse. The inverse looks like this, right? We have a cubic function, and its roots are 0, 1, and negative 1. And so this cubic function, it looks like this. Okay, now we need to graph this, the inverse or the original function, right? So let me put a reflection here, right? Because that's how inverses work. Okay, what we have is we end up having an inverse, something like that, or whatever, right? Okay, so let's draw this a little nicer something like that right 
Okay, now, here is the issue. Now you see the issue? The issue is, if we're integrating this function here, right? However, there's something wrong about this, right? We have this portion here and this portion here that does that makes it not a function. We have like, uh, I don't know, sleeping bumps, sleeping parabolas. I don't know what you, what you call them. But we this is this is the main issue here, right? So I mean we know that plugging in zero, it, I mean of course the this original function has to equal to zero somewhere here, okay? But notice that there is something here. Uh, we can't integrate like this. Uh, this is that's 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 not okay. So if we're if we are integrating from 0 to 6, then we are integrating from 0 to, uh, to 6, where at 6 here, uh, it's equal to 2, right? But at 0, what's, what is this? Right? That's what we want to find, okay? What is this? Okay? And of course, I mean, it's not zero, because zero is right here. It's not negative one, because negative one's right here. So that means our only solution is one. So that means that that bound here is one, okay? It's not zero, it's not negative one, right? The, the lower bound is one. So, but a lot, of, a lot of people would think it's, oh, it's zero because, I mean, it, it's the most trivial looking solution, right? But that's not correct because zero is here. And having zero here is like integrating this portion here, which is a, an error. This, that's, a, that's a huge error, right? Because of that huge sleeping parabola bump here. So be very careful with that, right? Be very careful with its domain. So this this is our sum of inverses. So now this is equal to 12 minus 0, whatever. Okay, so our answer, so this integral is equal to 12 minus the integral of one to, uh, from 1 to 2. Our inverse is x cubed minus x dx. And now this gives us x to the power of 4. I'm sorry. Uh, 2 to the power of 4 over 4 minus uh, 2 square over 2 and then minus uh, 1 fourth plus a half right and then this is what this is equal to 12 minus and then we have like 4 minus uh, 2 minus 1 uh, plus one fourth, I believe. This is two plus one fourth. This is twelve minus nine fourths. Twelve minus nine fourths. This gives us thirty nine over four, and that is our answer. Okay, be very careful. This, this was deadly. This is what killed a lot of competitors. Okay. Be very careful with some of inverses. It needs to be the correct bound uh, based on the domain of this function. Okay, so be very very careful. All right, so that was our last integral. That's about it for uh, some tricky infinite function integrals. So of course, if the inverse seems a little impossible, consider the inverse. Okay. All right, I hope that's very helpful. Again, practice, practice, and yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next part. See ya.